Uh, we're going to make pot of shoe. We're going to uh, pipe these into uh, swans. And the uh, recipe calls for eight ounces of boiling water. And a mistake that people make is they put the eight ounces of water in their pot uh, and then boil it. What you need to do is weigh with our trusty scale. We need to weigh eight ounces of boiling water into our pot. And then begin the procedure of melting the butter. So we're going to go here. We're almost there, seven and a half. Okay, we have eight ounces. All right. We're going to get this boiling. And then we're going to add four ounces of cold butter. And you don't need to cut this up or anything. Just put it right in here. And we have four ounces of all-purpose flour and one-fourth teaspoon salt, which we're going to add into this. Now, it's important that uh, you let, you just pay attention to when the butter is melting, and then as soon as it's melted, we're going to add the flour in all at once, and we're going to use a flat bottom spoon, wooden spoon, to stir this into a paste. And I'll explain to you what the characteristics of the paste are in a bit. Uh, pot of choux is used for eclairs, cream puffs, uh, many, many little uh, desserts. You can also make cream puffs and, and uh, stuff them with salad, savory things like uh, curry salad or anything like that. You can use them for hors d'oeuvres. So it's a very versatile dough. You can also make them into gnocchi. Some people do that. Uh, which is you just cook them in water and you have a little pasta type thing. So we're letting this melt, letting the butter melt until uh, over the boiling water. And we have a little evaporation of the water, which is fine. But again, we've started with weighed boiling eight ounces of water. It was really important to do that. It's almost ready. But the butter's foaming. Okay. So again, this is pretty high heat, and we want that. We want the butter to completely melt, so we want to keep an eye on it. And then while we're, uh, we're waiting here, it's almost done. We have four eggs that are room temperature. And just making sure, we, okay, we've got it. Okay, now what we do is we pour the flour in all at one time, and immediately you start stirring rapidly. We don't want to get the boiling water in our face, but we want to stir really fast, so we incorporate all of that flour, and the flour, uh, the water is now absorbing the flour, and we stir this, and if we've done this right, and the measurements are right, the paste comes together like this. So if you're at this phase and the paste is still not like this in any way, too loose or something like that, you better throw it out and start over again, because what we want is a pastry that's hollow in the middle. So if, if it doesn't come out this way, it's going to be solid. So that would be disappointing. Okay, so this is it. So you want this to go like this. Kind of mix this around a little bit. Cool it just a little bit. In the case of pot of choux, this is, um, this is leavened with steam, which means that the steam is going to cause the eggs to expand and they're going to hold, um, they're going to hold that air, the, the steam. So you want to use room temperature eggs because cold eggs will not expand as much as room temperature eggs do. So we're going to start here and we're going to put in one egg and we're going to start mixing. Lift the bowl a little bit and as soon as as soon as that disappears, you're going to add another one. What I'm doing now is I'm scraping the mixture toward the bottom because I want this to be mixed evenly. Okay, and we'll just wipe the rubber scraper on the uh, bottom of the paddle. And we'll start again. Lift the bowl. And we're going to 
going to scrape again. And if you were to look in the bowl here, you would see that the paste now is a, is a less firm consistency. And our last one. Just want to make one last sweep at the bottom of the bowl here before we remove the paddle here. Just one last little, this looks really good. Just one little last minute. Okay, everything is mixed beautifully. And so now we have a paste, which is our classic pot of shoe. And now that we have the mixer moved out of the way, I have the paste and I have two different plastic pastry bags. This one is 21 inches. This may be uh, pretty large. And again, this is a paste that's going to ooze out. So I'm going to push the uh, bottom of the bag in here so we don't have any runouts here. And I'm going to push some right here. This uh, paste is actually even a little more uh, loose than some of the icings that you would use. So it's a little more temperamental, but it's okay. We're just going to put a little bit in here. So I'm going to be piping some swans. And so for this, I'm using a number six to eight plain tip. I almost forgot here. We've got to push that in. Otherwise, we'll have it coming out of the bottom here. And this is a smaller. This is a 12 inch. So we're not going to put quite so much in here. You don't have to worry. You can let this out for a bit. Uh, you don't have to, you know, a half hour or so. Uh, it's not going to lose any volume or anything when you bake them. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pipe some swan heads and necks, and I'm going to press and draw it up and kind of into an S shape. And stop. Again, squeeze and build. Draw it up. Again, less pressure here. Just, just let it fall out into an S or an abbreviated S, I guess. Okay, I'm going to do this again. Draw it up just so you get the beautiful, graceful, gracefulness of a swan. Whoops, we have a little breakage here, which we can, it's a little air bubble, we'll fill that in. Okay, up and around and down and curve it just a little bit. Okay, so we can continue with these. We can reload the bag if we, if we have to. And again, it's just even pressure and it's almost 90 degrees that you're doing this. Okay, each one has a little personality, which we like. Okay, now we want some little beaks, so we're going to go in and draw this out. You can squeeze a little bit. I've got a little air pocket here. Don't squeeze too much, but we'll squeeze a little bit. We pinch that off. There we go. We just want a little point sticking out so we have a little face. Okay, like that. Again. So this has air uh, in it, which of course is, is going to uh, expand when, when we uh, bake them. So we're, we have the oven set at 425 degrees, all right, and we're going to bake these. Um, I'm going to put them in now, and uh, we're going to bake them for about 15 minutes, and we're going to see the color, and if the color isn't uh, brown enough and they're not crisp enough, we'll turn the pan around like this, and we'll continue baking at five-minute intervals until it's just the right crispiness. I'm going to put these in the oven right now. What I'm doing now is I'm going to pipe the bodies of the swans and I'm using a large commercial uh, rosette serrated tip and you can uh, you can choose the the size that you want but it's best to use one that's open rather than closed. Uh, some of the serrated have that and what I'm doing now is I'm piping an exaggerated shell okay into a point. 
So here we go again. I, it's a 45 degree angle and I'm pressing, building, because I want a body, the tummy and chest. Okay, and I'm going again. Build, build, draw out. So it depends. Um, it depends on how large you want them, but these, of course, are going to triple in size, and so we'll let this go, and you release the pressure as you're coming up. Again, build, 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 45-degree angle, and continue releasing the pressure just before you come to the end. One more time. I have enough here. Okay, one more time. 45, build, 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 build and come out and release pressure. These are going to be baked also at 420, just like the, the head and the neck, except that we're going to turn down the temperature to 375 and continue baking after 20 minutes, so we're sure to get the entire internal uh, part baked because uh, we don't want it to be too eggy and raw. And then, but if it all goes well, it's going to puff up two or three times the size and it's going to be hollow in the center. And then we're going to make this into swans. I'd like to show you how to make some lightly sweetened whipped cream. And the formula for one cup of cream is, one, is eight ounces of manufacturing cream, two ounces of sifted powdered sugar, and one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. And in the bowl here, I have a double recipe. So if I give you the one recipe for each cup, no matter how many cups you need, if it's eight cups or whatever, you just multiply that master by the number of cups that you think that you need, and you have, you have the amount. So right now, I have a pound of manufacturing cream, and I have four ounces of sifted powdered sugar, because I'm making, again, two recipes of the cream. And I'm going to measure one half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, and again, we're using vanilla extract, not vanilla flavoring, because we don't want an aftertaste. Before I turn the mixer on, uh, I want to uh, also explain that manufacturing cream is the cream that I use all the time for whipped cream, because it has about 35% fat in it, which allows the cream uh, to, to whip up much faster than ultra-pasteurized uh, whipping cream. So we're going to begin. And if you were to look in the bowl, you'd see, you would see that there is powdered sugar that kind of scoots up the side. And that's normal because you have uh, corn starch in here and the, the beaters kind of let that fly to the side. So you just have to show the machine who's boss here and just Scoot it down into the milk, into the cream, and start. I, I started on medium, high, and then I increased the speed. Now, you don't want to, meet, to uh, leave the room and just forget about this cream, because when, the, when you come back, you're likely to have sweetened butter instead of cream, because the fat will separate out, and you're going to have uh, the whey and uh, the butter. So. You have to watch, and it's very, it's, it's creamy now, it's getting thicker, and it is possible to overmix your cream, uh, not turning it into butter, but we don't want it to curdle, so we want a nice smooth cream when we're finished. I'm going to turn the speed up again now. I'm lifting the bowl so the beater catches the bottom of the mixer. And I'm noticing that around the edges, again, this is a machine that, that goes around and around. Around the edges, you have cream that's thinner. So what I want to do is I want to fold that cream into the center, because otherwise you're going to have some overmixed cream and you're going to have undermixed cream. So we're going to keep it balanced. OK, now we have, didn't take long. We have our stiff cream, but not too stiff. We don't have curdle, curdle cream. We have it. It's just, just right. And now what we're going to do, because we're going to fill our swans, we're going to 
have our, our strawberries ready, and then we're going to prepare the bodies. Now, um, as you can see, we have sort of a shell shape, and we're going to cut the top off. And you want to do the same process. In other words, you want to you want to do what you want to finish the same process, cutting all the bodies off. If you're doing more than you know one or two, um, and so you just kind of do this in a production thing, and just do these same processes. And then, if you notice, there's this web-like structure in here. And you can clear some of this out. This is quite normal, but you notice that that was hollow. And uh, if it were solid, something def definitely would be not OK with that. OK, then we need to fill our bodies here. And reach over and get a spoon. What I'm going to do is, sorry, we're going to scrape our strawberries in here. We're going to fold strawberries in. We have a lot of strawberries. We want this to be delicious. We're going to save some of the strawberries because we want to garnish a little bit. OK. And now we're going to spoon this out. You can pipe it, but it's kind of pretty to, to spoon it in. And then you can, put, you can pick and choose the strawberries. The same here, we're just kind of quenelle it out there, just kind of shape it into a, a oval. Okay. And then we'll put the heads in. I'll put them in. Let me put them in here like this. I'm going to put another strawberry on top of this one. like this. And then we have our wings. Like this. A wing over here. A wing over here. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get my tamas. It has a little powdered sugar on here. And we're going to cover this beautiful, delicate, angelic swan with powdered sugar. We'll just kind of get ourselves organized. Presentation plate. We found out a little strawberry. I'm going to add maybe a little strawberry in the back here. Here and there, like little feathers. Okay. Gives a little more color. There we go. And then we're going to make some two romantic little swans. We have our perfect little dessert, our super soulmate. This is Soulmate Swans.